Hello friends, welcome to my channel JM Learning. Today we will discuss and learn the mutually induced EMF. Before we discuss the concept of mutually induced EMF, first we will revise the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Faraday has invented the two laws related to electromagnetic induction. The first law, this law states that whenever magnetic flux linking with a coil changes, then an EMF is induced in it. According to this law, for induction of EMFs, two basic things are required. There must be the magnetic flux linking and it must change with a coil, then only EMF is induced in that coil. Now the second law, the second law states that the magnitude of this induced EMF is directly proportional to rate of magnetic flux linkage. That means at how much fast the magnetic flux linkage with a coil occurs, the induced EMF will increase or decrease according to it. Now there are two types of induced EMFs according to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. The first is the self-induced EMF. Another is the mutually induced EMFs. As today we are learning the mutually induced EMF. So first we will study the statement of mutually induced EMF. When a magnetic flux linking with a coil changes, then an EMF is induced in a nearby coil. Now this mutually induced EMF concept that we are going to learn will require the three basic requirements or things. First is we will require the two coils A and B and they must be placed to nearby to each other. Secondly, the coil A will produce a magnetic flux that will link with the another coil and that magnetic flux linkage must be have the change in it. Thirdly, we require the coil B and the coil B must be connected to a galometer to check the induced EMF in it. How to understand this concept clearly, we will refer to this diagram. The diagram shows that there are two coils, coil A and B, which are placed nearby to each other. The coil A is having a winding over it, having terminals 1 and 2. The number of turns of coil A we may call it set N1, while the coil B is also having the similar turns on, the, on its surface and the terminals are 3 and 4. Let us say that the coil B is having the number of turns as N2. Now the coil A, as we earlier stated that it has to produce a magnetic flux linkage. So it must produce first the magnetic flux. Now it is possible through connecting the coil A to a supply system. It is as shown in figure. It is connected to a battery whose voltage can be called as V and through a rheostat or a regulator and a switch is placed in the circuit of the coil A. Similarly, the two ends of coil B are connected to a galometer to check whether EMF is induced in it. Now, if we refer to the diagram, the diagram shows that the switch is already in the closed position. It means that the current will circulate from the battery through switch. It will enter at the terminal number 1, then it will go to all the turns of this coil of A and return back to 2 and again return back to the negative terminal of battery. Now during this process, the coil A will produce an MMF that is magnetomotive force that will be equal to N1 into Y. Now corresponding to this MMF, this coil A will produce a flux. Some of that flux will link with the coil B as shown here by the dotted lines. This flux linking with the coil B, we can temporarily call this as the phi1 flux. Now this phi1 flux which is linking with the coil B. Now up to this, the coil A has produced an MMF, it has produced a magnetic flux, 
out of that magnetic flux phi 1 is the amount of flux that is linking with coil b now after some period of time maybe say 5 or 10 seconds if we open the switch here then what will happen as soon as we open the switch the current i will reduce to zero this reduction in current zero will produce the mmf to be zero because mm is equal to number of turns into current if current is zero mf will be zero this flux will also do not exit and phi 1 will become zero it means that initially when the switch is closed the flux is phi 1 when the switch is open the flux goes to the zero value it is written here phi 1 is the magnetic flux linking with coil b when switch is closed and phi 2 is the magnetic flux linking with the coil b when switch is open when switch is open the flux linking with coil b will be equal to zero if it happens in time of operation of switch let that time be t now in this case what will be the total flux linkage now the total flux linkage will be equal to n2 in bracket phi 1 minus phi 2 n2 is the number of turns of the coil b phi 1 is the initial flux and phi 2 is the final flux that is when switch is open it means that during closing and opening of the switch there is a magnetic flux linkage associated with coil b and an emf is induced in the coil b and the galometer will show the direction of induced emf through its deflection now even if we do not close the switch still we can observe the induction of emf in that case if we move this pointer that is the reverse that if it is cut at some rate through the circuit then it will produce the changing of the current in the coil a whenever coil current in the coil a changes then it will produce correspondingly changes in the magnetic flux produced by the coil a which links with coil b and emf will be induced in the coil b it means that we can have the mutual induction emf concept either by two ways first you close the switch then it open it in second case you keep the switch close then you go on changing the current through the coil in both cases we will see that there is an emf induced in the coil b and this is being referred as mutually induced emf mutually induced emf as we see in the diagram require the two coils one coil must produce the magnetic flux and it must have the magnetic flux linkage then only an emf is induced in the coil b this kind of principle of mutual induced emf is used in the working of the transformer for ac circuit applications i think we have understood and learned the concept of mutually induced emf okay thank you friends